Hi everyone, I'm Joana, a Portuguese girl who has been calling Denmark home for nearly a year and a half. I have been receiving a ton of messages from you with questions about my journey to Denmark. So, in today's video, I'm excited to answer some of them. I want to mention that what I'm about to share here is based on my experience as an European citizen living in Denmark. The first tip I like to give, which I consider the most important of all, is to make this decision calmly and organize yourself very well. Unfortunately, I have seen cases of people who came here without proper planning and it didn't go well. If you don't have anyone here to help you start looking for a job from your home country. Only when you have a job secure, in my perspective, should you start planning your move. In terms of job searching, I recommend platforms like LinkedIn, Work in Denmark DK, Jobnet DK and Job Index DK. Something important to know is that if you are not an expert in a specific field, for example technology, finding a job when you are not a Danish speaker can be challenging. Even though most people here speak English very well and it's crucial for the daily life of an expat here, knowing Danish can still be very helpful, especially if you want more job options. Talking about my initial impressions, let me tell you, the initial days were quite an adventure. The culture shock and the weather, especially arriving in November and being dark around 4 pm, posed some challenges. If I could give a tip, it would be to moving during summer to avoid dealing with this issue simultaneously while you deal with the adjustments to the new country. About finding a place to live. Another tip is consider finding a room initially. The rental costs for houses here in Denmark are quite high, usually requiring a deposit plus the first month's rent, however, the deposit is refundable if there are no damages at the end of the rental. Finding a room using, for example, Airbnb can be more affordable and flexible in the first stage. And in case you are wondering which documents you need to get first, Building on the previous tip, it's easier to first try renting a room and obtaining your documents using that address, of course, with the permission and knowledge of your landlord. This is because you need these documents to rent a house, but you can only get them by providing a Danish address, so this creates a bit of a paradox. The most important document you need to obtain, not to undermine the others, but this is undoubtedly the document, is called Yellow Card, which comes with the CPR number, aka your personal identification number. For those in Portugal, this is equivalent to our NIF. With the CPR, you can create a bank account, ask for the Meet ID, which is what people use to access all digital platforms in Denmark, and much more. To obtain the CPR, as I already mentioned, you need to have a valid residence document and a plausible reason for coming, such as job contract, family union, etc. If you are bringing a dog, and I'm sorry, but my personal experience is only with dogs, so I don't know if this applies to other types of pets, but ensure you take all necessary precautions. Despite Denmark being in the European Union, in Portugal we obtained a canon passport, which proved useful at the Danish border, impressing officers with updated vaccinations and de-warming. Additionally, we got insurance for our dog upon arrival and this is really important for you to do for your pet as soon as you arrive. I will leave the name of my pet's insurance company on the screen. Bringing a car from another European country. From our experience, I wouldn't recommend bringing a car. Legalizing a car with a foreign license plate in Denmark is costly. You can search it online. I suggest leaving your car in your home country with a family number or even consider selling it. Denmark has excellent biking and scootering lanes and public transportation options. But if you really need a car, my advice would be opting for a lease in the first months. Language barriers. One of my biggest challenges has been learning the Danish language. I haven't managed to learn it yet, but if you are considering moving here, start learning early. I recommend using Duolingo for your first words. 
cultural observations. Living in Denmark has given me a unique perspective on Danish culture. From their work-life balance to social norms, I appreciate how Danes enjoy their short days starting early in the morning and I'm also fascinated by how they prioritize the well-being and development of children. Given that I had a slightly difficult childhood, I find their approach to children very admirable. Quality of life. Is life in Denmark as good as they say? Spoiler alert, it's pretty amazing. While I haven't needed to use the healthcare system, friends have praised its accessibility and excellent service. I believe the only less efficient health service is psychology, considering the high demand for this type of appointments. Regarding public services, there's a significant difference when comparing to Portugal. Everything is faster, more efficient, digitalized and automated here. In Denmark, taxes play a crucial role in founding the country's extensive welfare system and public services. The Danish tax system is known for its progressiveness, where individuals with higher incomes contribute a larger proportion portion of their earnings. Despite the high level of taxes, the truth is that it ends up being beneficial for the citizens from free healthcare, high quality education and robust social safety nets, all supported by the taxation system. And that's all for today's video. If you have more questions or want to share your experiences, drop a comment down here below. Feel free to like and subscribe the channel if this content was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in the next one. Meanwhile, you can watch my previous ones here or here. Bye!